my name is Lilian Silva. I work as a postdoctoral fellow at Auburn University, and my presentation uh, here today is entitled Forage Production and Nutritive Value of Alfalfa Bermuda Grass Mixtures Managed Under Contrasting Defoliation Strategies in the Southeast US. The development of newer alfalfa varieties that are tolerant to growing conditions and management strategies used in the Southeast region have allowed the adoption of alfalfa back into forage systems in the region. Incorporation of alfalfa into grass systems can increase forage production and nutritive value. Bermuda grass has similar soil fertility and drainage requirements to alfalfa, and its incorporation helps to decrease the reliance on chemical nitrogen fertilizer, which improves both sustainability and profitability of forage systems. In terms of establishment, alfalfa is planted into Bermuda grass systems on fall using 14 inches um, spacing row. This spacing recommendation comes from previous work conducted at the University of Georgia, where they evaluated contrasting spacing and uh, spacing strategies and determined the effects of on forage production and Bermuda grass persistence. On the year of establishment, the first harvest event must be done when alfalfa blooming is close to 25% to allow for alfalfa to accumulate storage reserves that will contribute towards its persistence. Then the next harvest should be performed when alfalfa is at uh, approximately 10% uh, blooming to optimize forage production and quality of forage. Both species in the mixture have high soil fertility requirements and it's crucial to properly uh, replenish it to support forage production and stand persistence. Rate of potassium must be within recommended and it's ideal to split apply it. Micronutrients are essential, especially boron and molybdenum once they support nitrogen fixation by alfalfa. This is a year-round system in the Southeast region since the species have complementary growth. However, alfalfa will slow down its growth in colder months of the year and Bermuda grass will remain dormant from around December through March, usually. In terms of harvest management, the recommended stubble high is 10 centimeters then under uh, grazing, rotational management is recommended to allow alfalfa to restore energy uh, reserves and persist over time. In our ongoing study, we are using a 28-day interval and adjusting stocking rates every seven days. This system is also conducive to hay or baleage production, and harvest should occur every 25 to 35 days, and moisture at baling should be between 40 and 60% for baleage production, and for hay production, uh, the moisture should be between 15 and 18%. This study was conducted in two locations, Headland, Alabama, and Chifton, Georgia, and alfalfa was interceded into well-established Bermuda grass pastures back in October 2019. The sampling, uh, the first year of uh, sampling, it started in June last year, 2020. And in this study, we are evaluating three management strategies, harvesting the, the, the area for hay or billage production, managing um, under grazing management, or under a dual purpose, which is um, cutting or grazing depending on the time of the year. The reason for use of this, this uh, management, the dual purpose management, is that usually there is a dry period during summer that's called summer slump in the region. And during that time, we can let the forests grow. To cut in late August and stockpile the material for grazing later uh, on a and uh, through this extending the grazing season further each year. For our, uh, our treatments, uh, we are using 224 um, 
kilos of potassium, which is around uh, 20, 20 uh, pounds of potassium per year, per acre. Splitting three applications, sorry, split three ap applications throughout the growing season. In terms of the response variables that we are measuring, we are measuring forage mass uh, through a technique called double sampling, which is um, a method that involves a destructive sampling, which is just going there and cutting the sample. Uh, and associated with these destructive measurement measures, uh, we are also using the just uh, the rising disk meter, which is just um, equipment that records a high that covers, uh, takes in consideration the mass that's in the area, not just the actual uh, canopy high, and just uh, estimates for forage mass are taken on both pre and post graze conditions for hay treatment. The weight of bales is registered at baling um, every at, at, at each cut. Then uh, samples collected at pre-harvest are separated uh, for botanical composition determination. Then individual components are dried into a constant weight and weight. Later, these samples are ground to pass a one millimeter screen and have their crude protein as detergent fiber and neutral detergent fiber concentrations determined using NRRS. Uh, we are also determining uh, average daily gain for animals grazing uh, these treatments and using put intake to uh, maintain a specific uh, forage allowance for them. In terms of forage mass, we observed uh, a range between 1,500 to uh, 1,700 uh, kilos per, um, per hectare of forage mass from June through August. And uh, on this graph, we see the distribution um, for each location, per each treatment. And uh, the GP is a dual purpose treatment. Then we have the hay and the grazing uh, treatments. Uh, we observed greater forage mass in June, July, and August than June for, uh, for treatments, which was associated with greater Chifton H5, uh, greater Bermuda grass proportion in this mixture. And uh, there was a 6% reduction in forage mass at uh, Georgia's location, then uh, the Alabama's location in July and August due to a limited rainfall they observed during this period last year. Uh, they had approximately half of the historical average for rainfall um, last year. Then uh, in terms of the botanical composition, that we were seeing in the mixture, the average percentage of alfalfa was 7% greater under hay than grazing treatment, while the dual purpose treatment did not differ uh, between, between them. On both, uh, on the bottle table, we have both locations and the percentage um, of each component in the mixture through June, from June through August. And on both locations, the percentage of alfalfa decreased over time, while the opposite was observed for uh, Bermuda grass, which was expected uh, because of the temperature that it's warming up through that period and uh, also associated with the peak of production for Chifton H5, Bermuda grass, uh, that's expected to be between June, Ju uh, sorry, between uh, late June, July through August for this region, and uh, which also contributed for uh, greater forage mass observed in July and August, as we just uh, mentioned on the previous slide. 
Then in terms of uh, uh, forage quality, crude protein concentration ranges from 15 to 20%. And um, NEGF concentration ranges from 43 to 62%. Uh, RFQ ranges from 80 to uh, 170. And we think treatments RFQ uh, values decrease from June through to August, associated with changes in proportion of individual components within this uh, mixture. Then in terms of uh, animal performance, uh, grazing just uh, paddocks, average daily gain was around um, a pound throughout the whole uh, year last year. But around this uh, period of time, we had um, around two pounds of gain for um, this period. Um, this difference in gain throughout the, the months was a reflection of the changes in botanical composition and forage quality observing the mixture over time. And uh, here we have the gain for animals grazing the dual purpose uh, study uh, and for the grazing treatment. And on the Alabama side, in late July and August, we had heat index over 104 fighting heights, which contributed to loss of weight in most animals and uh, to a gain per day equals zero or even uh, some animals losing weight during that period of time. So just a brief summary uh, of this um, overview of uh, the alfalfa runa grass research. Greater forage mass was associated with peak of production of chief 25 during the season. An increased chief 25 uh, proportion reflected in the craze on nutritive value responses. Uh, then, this me however, this mixture was still able to sustain a good animal performance um, throughout the time that the animals were grazing there. And they, um, for this specific period of time, they gained around a kilo um, or two pounds uh, per day in weight. And we expect the future efforts uh, for this line of research to continue to address management strategies and provide research-based educational resource eff uh, efforts and resources to help producers to make educated decisions in their forage systems. With that, I would like to uh, acknowledge our USDA NIFA grant award and uh, which have been uh, the reason we are able to continue to conduct this research and uh, extension activities. And I would like to extend an inv invitation for you to join us uh, on the Alfalfa in the South workshop at the Chifton campus uh, in Georgia on September 16th this year. And please uh, send me an email on the email here on the screen if you have any questions or would you like any follow-up um, in this uh, topic of research. I appreciate your time watching this presentation. Thank you so much. And see you on the next video.